Hi all, in this video we discuss about buses. What is the bus? How it will be performing in computer system? The role of bus we will discuss it one by one. First of all, buses. Buses process main memory and input output devices interconnected by means of a by a bus. Bus provides communication path for transfer of data. Bus also includes the lines to separate, support, interrupts and arbitrations. Bus protocol specifies parameters such as asserting control signals, timing of placing of information on bus, rate of data transfer. Bus lines may be grouped into three types. So those are data, address and control. Control signal specifies whether it is a read or write operation. Read means take the information and write means receives the information. Required size of data when several often size bit byte code long word are possible. Timing information to indicate when the processor and input output device may place data or receive data from the bus. Schemes of schemes for timing data transfers over a bus can be classified into synchronous and asynchronous. Synchronous bus all devices derive timing information from a common clock line equally spaced pulses on this line define equal time intervals. During a bus cycle, one data transfers can take place. A sequence of events during a read operation at time t naught, the master that is processor places the device addresses on the address lines. Sends an appropriate command on control lines. The command will indicate the input operation specify the length of the operand to be read. So this is all about the timing of an input transfer of synchronous bus structure. Next, synchronous bus, uh, a master place the device addresses in a common and the bus and indicates that it is a read operation. Addressed slave device data on the data lines, master strokes the data on the data lines into input buffer for a read operation. In case of a write operation, the master places the data on the bus along with the address and commands at time t0. The slave strokes the data into its input buffer at time t2. Synchronous bus, once the master places the device address and command on the bus, it takes time for this information to propagate to the device. This time depends on the physical and energy characteristics of the bus. Also, all the devices have to be given enough time to decode the addresses and control signals so that the address slave and place data on the bus. Width of the pulse T1 minus T0 depends on the maximum propagation delay between two devices connected to the bus. Time taken by all the devices to decode the address and control signals so that the address save can respond at a time t1. At the end of clock cycle, at time t2, the master strokes the data on the data lines into its input buffer if it is read operation. Stroke means to capture the values of the data and store them into buffer. When data are to be loaded into the storage buffer register, the data should be available for a period longer than a setup time of the device. Width of the pulse T2 minus T1 should be longer than maximum propagation time of the bus pulse. Set up time of the input buffer register of the master. So this is the synchronous of the bus structure. Address command appears on the bus. Data reaches the master, address command reaches the slave, data operates on the bus. Signals don't appear on the bus as soon as they are placed on the bus due to the propagation delay in the interface circuits. 
signals reach the device after propagation delay, which depends on the characteristics of the bus. Data must remain on the bus for some after T2 equal the whole time of the buffer. Synchronous bus. Data transfer has to be completed within one clock cycle. Clock period T2 to must be such that the longest propagation delay on the bus and the slowest device interface must be accommodated. Forces on the device to operate at the speed of the slowest device. Process just assumes that the data are available at T2 in case of read operation or are ready by the device in case of write operation. What if the device is actually played and never really responded? Most buses have control signals to represent a response time from the slave. The control signals are served two purposes. Inform the master that the slave has recognized addresses and it is ready to participate in data transfer operation. Enable to adjust the duration of the data transfer operation based on the speed of the participating slaves. High frequency bus clock speed <laughs> clock is used. High frequency bus clock is used. Data transfer spans every several uh, clock cycles instead of just one clock cycle as in the earlier case. See this is the address and comment requesting read operation appear on the bus master uh, strokes data into input buffer slave places the data on the bus and assets slave read signal clock changes are seen by all the devices at the same time asynchronous process data transfer on the bus is controlled by handshake between master and slave common clock in the synchronous bus case is replaced by two timing control lines master ready slave ready master ready signal is accepted by the master to indicate to slave that it is ready to participate in a data transfer slave ready signal is accepted by the slave in response to the master ready from the master and it indicates to the master that slave is ready to participate in the data transfer Data transfer using handshake protocol, master places the address and command information on the bus, assets the master ready signal to indicate to the slaves that address and command information has been placed on the bus. All devices on the bus decode the bus addresses. Address slave performs the required operation and inform the processor it has done so by accepting the slave ready signal. Master removes all the signal from the bus once the slave ready is accepted. If the operation is read operation, master also stops all data into its input buffer. So this is the uh, bus cycle operation asynchronous. Address and command lines of the top one and below master ready and slave ready and data. T0 position master place the address and command information on the bus. T1 position master assets the master ready signal. Master ready signal is asset at T1 instead of T0. T2 address the slave place the data on the bus and assets the slave ready signal. T3 slave ready signal arrives at the master. Master removes T4 address and command information. T5 slave receives the information transformation transition of the master ready signal from the 1 to 0. It removes the data and the slave ready signal from the bus. Asynchronous versus synchronous buses. Advantages of asynchronous bus eliminates the need for synchronization between the sender and the receiver. Can accommodate varying delays automatically using slave ready signal. Disadvantage of uh, asynchronous bus data transfer rate with will full handshake is limited by two round trip delays. Data transfer using asynchronous bus involves only one round trip delay, and hence synchronous bus can achieve faster rates. <laughs>